Carlos Maza. I don't approve of his hypocrisy nor his totalitarian methodologies. He incites violence. He tells people to physically assault those who have views that he disagrees with or that he hates. And on social media, he calls to try to have people deplatformed who have views that he disagrees with or views that he hates. And if you disagree with him on any of the methods that he likes to use, then you apparently don't actually care about LGBT and are no better than the fascists. Apparently. Having said that, some of the things that he says about YouTube are correct. For years, YouTube has awarded people for being the most edgy, the most controversial, the most toxic. They've given those people money for being all those things. More and more, as time goes on, it's proving to not be a form of dependable employment. People are having to rely on different means than YouTube monetization and people seeing ads. They're having to say, oh, subscribe star, or Patreon, or they're making their own ads for products from, with companies that they've, they have a contract with. That sort of thing. And you know what? That's probably a good thing. As I've said before, monetization kind of ruined some of the good things about YouTube. Before they did the monetization thing, YouTube was actually more for you, the user. And now it's mostly about some way to make money, and now mainstream media has their hands in this sort of thing, and, and they want that control that they do on television. So yeah, monetization has kind of messed up YouTube, as far as I'm concerned. But people like Carlos Maza try to capitalize on the same types of things. Except in this case, it's things that are edgy, toxic, controversial, that are on the left, that he's very totalitarian about. Right-wingers, at least on social media, aren't really all that totalitarian in their views, the, the views that they state anyway. I mean, when their views are toxic, they're really, really toxic. Like, wow. And there are some that are totalitarian. And the way that they're usually totalitarian is using traditionalism. They mix traditionalism with peer pressure. And when they do this, they usually don't want to get the law involved. They don't want to change any rules on anything. Because their methods that they use usually work good enough. Now, in the cases when they do want the law to get involved, they do awful things like try to destroy women's body autonomy. You know, where they claim they care so much about the unborn fetus, and then don't give a shit about it once it's born, you know. Or at least, they don't want the government getting involved in anything that could help the baby once it's been born. To be more specific, so I don't have people getting all over my case. Not like they won't anyway. And then there's how so many Republicans continually want to insert their religion into the law system. It's really ugly. And unfortunately, there are a lot of people with those kinds of viewpoints, and the people that want to change the laws, who have a lot of power right now. It's why the left is freaking out as much as they are. Or one of the reasons. But yeah, on social media, yeah, the, the right wing doesn't, you know, Republicans particularly, don't really need to get the law or rules involved. Their guilt trips usually work good enough. They get people to shut up. They get people to stop stating their views. They get people to self-censor. But they won't call that censorship. They'll say, oh, well, they're the ones that are censoring their own stuff. We didn't do it. <laughs> and then they put the smugly puff sort of uh, deal there, right? But yeah, the right wing is much better at shaming and guilting people than the left is. They're really good at making people feel like shit. They're great at pushing people's buttons. It's one of their big fortes. The right has always been better and more effective at bullying, at least in my lifetime anyway. They know how to maximize the effectiveness and painfulness of their words using as few words as possible. Now, fortunately, it's usually easily recognized when they try to do it via religion, via religious views. It can easily be countered by someone just saying, ah, so you're pushing religious views down my throat. No thanks. When the left tries to guilt people, I mean, they may get a lot of people together, but they usually just say the same words and phrases over and over again like a broken record, not even caring whether the words that they use are even accurate or not. 
racist, homophobe, misogynist, sexist, you know the drill, oh, Nazi. And yes, sometimes the people that they're yelling at actually are racist, misogynistic, sexist, or even fascist. But they've said those phrases so many times in recent, in recent years, that they've lost their meaning. Or maybe not their full meaning, but they've certainly lost a lot of power that they used to have. It's like the boy who cried wolf. So no, I don't approve of Carlos Maza, but I'm not going to blame him for everything bad that happens on YouTube. Just saying. Ooh.